Hello guys, Steven here and uh, welcome to another video. So today I'm going to review the Jaguar I-Pace and uh, I got it for uh, an hour or so so it's not a lot of time to do things but uh, let's see what it looks like, let's see how practical it is and uh, inevitably I'm going to compare it left or right with the uh, Tesla but I'm going to try to be as neutral as possible about this car because I'm really interested whether to see whether or not this car is a real alternative to the Tesla. Now let's start with the boot or the trunk and as you can see it's uh, pretty large for a car that is not that large uh, as a footprint but uh, it got a completely flat floor and underneath here let's see what we have here oh <laughs> a lot of commercial things but uh, there's a small compartment there which is intended uh, to store your uh, charging cables but you're not going to be using a lot of charging cables uh, and adapters. Um, so yeah, it's a small compartment, but yeah, it's additional and uh, it's good. Uh, completely flat floor, uh, no side pockets, however. So on this side, uh, nor on that side, there's no side pockets. And let's see what the car looks like when the seats are down. So now I folded seats down um, and you see that the seats are not flush with the rest of the car. Uh, but an advantage uh, is that the bottom of the, the seat here, so let me show you like this part right here, right? that's just flat and with the Tesla that's like a big hung, uh, lump that's, uh, that's there. Um, so yeah, let's see for uh, our next test whether or not it will fit me to sleep in the car. So right now I'm lying with my feet completely to the back of the car and my head just barely touches the edge. So I'm like one, 165 centimeters, so I'm quite short. Uh, a longer person will not be able to sleep in the car, especially since you won't have uh, a headrest here available or you need to put the suitcase in there so maybe if you go like this uh, yeah that could work but uh, unfortunately then you're lying a little bit skewed and you will be rolling over so it's not that comfortable but hey only a few people that sleep in their car so this is the really tiny frunk that we have so we have like the fire extinguisher a few charging cables um, that are in here, but you're not going to put a real bag in there So it's good for things like a, a charging cable and what's in there right now But uh, you're not going to use that to store a bag as luggage Now the Jaguar has a top view which is a common requested feature by Tesla owners, but the pity is it's such a big screen that you have here but there's only like this small section that is being used so that's unfortunately could have made it a lot bigger if they turned it um, but next to that you can get to what seems to be individual cameras so if you look at this um, I bring it back so if you look at this you have the forward camera some side forward cameras some side cameras and uh, backside and completely at the back so if you look at forward camera then we get a forward view and if you look at the sides then 
let me just put it away then you see left and right to uh, to the front of the car now you may think that those are different cameras but in fact they are actually one and the same camera it's just that it's been taken to a very wide angle or a narrower angle to show the center one and the very wide is being split up in two uh, parts there so here you see the one single lens or the one single camera that is being used for left and right front view and for the uh, centralized front view uh, underneath the mirrors you have some uh, side cameras which give you the uh, advantage of seeing whether you will have some curb rush yes, yes or no um, so that's a good thing and then the same goes for the back cameras where the screen this time it's not really split it's just a very wide angle lens that's on there and a narrower field of view for uh, looking at the back there so you have a digital instrument cluster uh, ahead of you you will also have a heads-up display right there uh, which projects your uh, speed on the windscreen and the uh, speed limit for example now the uh, center screen has a lot of functions so you can swipe that it's all touch screen and you can press on the different panels uh, and stuff like that and you can change your driving style uh, you can also change that using some mode buttons um, so yeah um, that is something that uh, that is kind of cool and we don't have that as much in a Tesla um, what else do we have so that's our home screen um, we saw that one this one is completely uh, configurable to your own likings and let's see your phone of course and then a lot of apps so I show you the cameras web browser so the car has a data connection which is paid by uh, Jaguar but it's only used for getting data from the car and sending updates to the car so it does the same thing as what uh, Tesla does sending updates over the air now if you want to uh, do more than that and use the internet uh, for example then you have to insert your own sim card which is in a slot in the armrest and then uh, you have your own data plan that you use for those features um, preconditioning so you can hang on if I turn it on there we go you can uh, enter a time for when to uh, start a preconditioning and then it's purely programmed so it's not like Tesla wants to do the smart preconditioning which by the way it doesn't work at all and this is more like okay I'm, I'm leaving at 7 a.m. every day during the week for my commute so I set it to 7 a.m. that I need this car to be preheated or pre-cooled so I think that's a better system than what Tesla currently has with the smart precondition in, in theory it sounds great and it used to work for a short while but uh, I haven't been able to use it properly in the past two, two and a half years at least. So yeah, there's not much uh, smart uh, with the smart preconditioning on a Tesla. And I'd rather see this one implemented on my car as well. So yeah, then we have the navigation settings. Uh, there, your phone, some media. So yeah, that... Uh, Plays the radio immediately, Bluetooth connection uh, for your devices, the cameras of course and then the park assist and uh, the automatic parking. Um, so we'll try that and see if we can find a spot to actually try the automatic parking mode and see how that works compared to what Tesla does. The bottom screen controls your uh, temperature and air conditioning so these dials rotate. You can also press them to enable the seat heater or the seat cooler which in this case the seat cooler is actually coupled to the uh, air conditioning instead of just being fans like it is in uh, in my car and basically it does nothing so yeah this one is the way it should be and attached to the air conditioning um, here are the seats oh there we go so and then this one changes as well so you immediately change the seat uh, heater there if you press the seat or of course the windshield or the, the back window 
uh, heater or defroster for the front windshield as well. So yeah, uh, it's quite complicated this screen so I fear it uh, takes away a lot of attention from, from the road when you, uh, when you do it like this. So you have the DNRP um, buttons for your uh, drive modes and then you have a bunch of buttons here for uh, going downhill so a little bit of the uh, Land Rover stuff that's in there and different modes where you can go from comfort mode to uh, dynamic mode where you can basically change everything to your likings which means that you can set the harshness of the acceleration, you can set the harshness of the dampening and stuff and that's all individual uh, based. And then here again you can change the ride height uh, as well and it goes quite high the car. Now for the uh, measurements so uh, the car has 400 horsepower or 294 kilowatts so this is the HSC edition uh, two electric motors uh, and their permanent magnet synchronous uh, motors 90 kilowatt hour battery that we have here and a WLTP action radius of uh, 480 kilometers this is what the manual says um, practically I think um, you should be able to do around 350 with this 90 kilowatt hour battery it's 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 a quite heavy car uh, I'll get to that in uh, in just a second but uh, it is also a little bit more consumer friendly than for example a Tesla Model X so the uh, consumption was I believe I read 212 watt hours per kilometer um, which is in Model S territory and with a, a Model S 90 you can do 400 kilometers uh, if you go really 100 to 0 and 350 is definitely manageable. I've been doing 350, 360 with my P85D uh, when I still had that one. So that should be no problem. Um, also the top speed is 200 km an hour. So okay, yeah, it's not 250, but how many times do you do 200 km an hour? It's only possible on the Autobahn, legally at least. And uh, yeah. Uh, chances of doing that are growing slimmer by the day because of the busy traffic even on the Autobahn but yeah no um, 200 I mean for me it's 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 more than enough my wife doesn't like me going any faster than 170 180 uh, she doesn't feel comfortable at that point even though the car is just planted uh, and and you don't re really notice it besides the heavy wind noise that you have but uh, other than that uh, the car can do over 200 perfectly, the Model S, and this one, I'm sure, it's a Jaguar, um, so it's going to be able to do 200 kilometers an hour, uh, basically all day long, I think. Uh, but that depends on how the battery is cooled, of course, and that is something we cannot test today. Acceleration, 0 to 100 kilometers an hour is 4.8 seconds. So for US people there, that's a, a 0 to uh, 60 miles an hour, of uh, 4.6 uh, around there and uh, you can subtract one and a half seconds uh, from the from that time if you don't count the first uh, foot rollout which is the numbers that Tesla gives so that's going to be like a 4.4 4.5 second car if we compare it to the numbers that Tesla provides if we now look at the dimensions of the car, so the car is 4 meters 68 centimeters long with a wheelbase of 2.99 meters and it is 2.01 meters wide uh, excluding the mirrors and 2.14 uh, meters with the mirrors extended. Um, so that's a little bit smaller than uh, than a Tesla uh, in, in width and the length is a lot smaller because uh, a Model S is like uh, just under 5 meters uh, and this one is 468 so that's uh, yeah that's a 30 centimeter or a one foot uh, difference there. Um, if you look at the weight then we're talking about 2.1 tons 
uh, as the start weight and then depending on the options that will add some weight so I think that is in the same range more or less than a Tesla Model S and a little bit lighter than a Tesla Model X so yeah being lighter of course will also mean that it have it will have a better range uh, than the X or a better consumption number than the X which shows in the numbers of course with the 212 versus I think on average uh, people are saying something like 250 uh, watt hours per kilometer for an X depending on your driving style of course and it's going to be the same here oh yeah one more advantage that goes to the I-Pace that's the amount of storage that you have in uh, in the car so uh, let me show you so first of all you have these uh, massive door pockets which can uh, fit an entire uh, one liter bottle no problem and then you have the center console which has a little cubby hold right here behind which goes through all the way and then you have two massive cup holders there and uh, it can also uh, uh, retain your phone in the center uh, even with the case because mine is quite floppy there right now uh, but yeah that's uh, that's quite good and then you get to this uh, cubby hold which is uh, quite deep actually so I can put my entire arm in there and then uh, here you have some uh, charge points some USBs the uh, micro sim uh, for when you have your own data uh, connection that you want to use and of course the 12 volts that are in there on the back door you have these uh, small pockets right here which is not a lot of room and uh, as you can see in the center there is no there's not a 12 volt and stuff but there's no cup holders uh, instead the cup holders are right here in the uh, armrest if you have a third person sitting here then uh, yeah that's a bit of a bit of a problem to use those uh, those cup holders